Everybody and welcome back at Adobe Live. Hi, Laurel. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. Very happy to be here with you. Very excited about today's stream. And uh, before we start, I want to say hi to the amazing people that are here in the chat joining us. I can see Fairy. Nice to see you, Cody Bear, in the chat helping us out. And uh, she's going to share all the amazing clickable links here. Uh, Kathleen Martin in the chat and uh, since Kathleen is here first of all hi Kathleen and make sure to stay tuned for our Photoshop daily creative challenges you can find more information at the um, behance.net slash sorry behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop to join our wonderful challenges in uh, of course Adobe Photoshop and if you're watching from YouTube make sure to head to be.net slash live. So I'm going to be able to uh, look at your uh, at your comments and your questions. We're going to be here together with Laura today and tomorrow for two hours, creating some very fun, um, wonderful composites. In fact, she is an amazing photo Photoshop compositor and artist. So I really look forward to see what we're going to be creating together again. Hello, Alison. Um, hello to everybody in the chat. Let us know, Ryan, uh, where you guys are tuning in from. I'm currently in Manchester, UK. Laurel, where are you based? I am currently in Phoenix, Arizona. Fantastic. So we usually have a very international community, but why don't we jump into Laurel um, Instagram? Because I want to give you a little bit of a, um, a preview of the wonderful art that she creates. You can go ahead and give her a follow on uh, her Instagram uh, with her name at Laurel Street, and you can find all the wonderful composites that she already created. We can see a lot of uh, uh, many different styles, and I already I can see one with Harry Potter and the mirror in the feed, uh, but one that we were having a little bit of a of a chat behind the scene that really caught my attention is this beautiful one with a with a butterfly. So, Laura, why don't you tell us more about yourself and what we're going to be creating in these two days? Hi, everybody. So happy to be here. My name is Laurel Street. I am a Photoshop artist, compositor. I'm also a videographer and I'm also a self-published author. So I love all things Fant fantastical and you know stories and fairy tales all that stuff um my spy my style is really inspired a lot by disney and harry potter as you can see by my instagram and that is uh primarily where i am the most active and where i, I share the most of my art so if you want to see more of it it's all there <laughs> um and it looks beautiful oh thank you so much thank you um yeah i also i tend to actually something I kind of started doing is I like to gender bend some of the characters. So, you know, characters that we know and love that are predominantly male, like I did a Hades one, I did Harry Potter, I do a lot of. So making it, instead of being a guy, have it being me. So I like to say, <laughs> I get myself stuck in fantastical situations. So I just kind of put myself in the middle of all these, all these things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I love to, create a lot of things from scratch, which um, a lot of people has, have said that that's what they like about my art. It's like, it's completely different and, you know, creative yeah, from scratch. I, that, that's what I was asking. Do you actually come up with the stories like sometimes yourself as well? Yeah. So I, a lot of the times I like to incorporate stories and photography together. So Sometimes it'll be a quick little like mini story attached to the photo or a quote from the movie it's from or just my own stories in general. So that's so cool. We have Fergie here saying the title got me so excited. I had to add the stream to the diary in order not to miss it. So we're <laughs> really, really excited to see um, well, this fairy tale uh, composite is going to take us today. So 
uh, I've been scrolling through your Instagram. Make sure to go ahead if you want to go and uh, look at all this beautiful creation that Laurel has published on her Instagram. Make sure to follow her at Laurel Street. And uh, feel free to jump and start in Photoshop or whatever you want to start from um, whenever, whenever you're ready. Because okay. we are excited. <laughs> yes, me too. Definitely. Um, so I just have up right here a couple extra pieces that I've done in the past, but I'm just going to click out of this guy and we're going to go into here. So this is a sketch. I kind of started out to just give everyone a general idea of what the piece is going to look like. This is usually my first step in the process anyway, just so I can get the idea I have in my head onto paper and I can see it with my eyes. <laughs> so that is kind of the general idea of what we're doing. So what I'm also going to do is I have already gone ahead and taken a few pictures of myself. And these are all of my images that I'm going to be using to create this composite. So as you can see here, these are a couple images that oh, I'll get out. That's, that's all my social. That's everything you can find me on. Um, so here I have one image of myself and then here's like a leg. Here's a second leg to make the appearance of me floating in the water. It takes a lot of work to make <laughs> to make it look right. And then the arm here. So we're just uh, going to. Oh, yeah. What? Uh, how, how do you take your photos underwater? So uh, it's all an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I just self timer it. And um, put all these together so that it has the appearance of floating in the water. I also, I mean, for this one, <laughs> I tried to do the hair a couple different ways. Um, Cause obviously if you're in the water, your hair needs to look like it's floating. So I actually went to my pool and tried a couple of these. <laughs> <laughs> Had my boyfriend take them. Um, but I don't know if I'm a super fan of how the hair actually looks there. So I, I went ahead and did just on a white background, my own little, what I think would look good as underwater hair. So we're gonna play around and see which one actually looks better. Fantastic, and, and sorry to interrupt you, but we already have Alison say that she absolutely love your wallpaper. So we have- <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if someone would comment. Thank you, I did it myself. <laughs> oh, wow, that's yeah. your- you hand draw, draw no, it? No, I, I put it up myself. I oh. <laughs> yeah, it well, was um it was a pain in the butt, but it I, it was worth it now because it looks really pretty. Yes. Okay, so this is um we'll start with me, I think is a good place. That's usually where I start in these different composites. So we're gonna turn off these layers and start with this one. Um let's put a clipping mask on here. And I'm just using my Wacom tablet and a and a pen to, to do this because it's easier. So yeah, I'm just gonna start going in and masking these out. Another cool thing Photoshop has actually, which let's try it out, is they have this fun subject. Boom, done. So let's, oopsie. Have you been using a Wacom tablet for a long time? I have, yeah. So I actually just got this new one because I upgraded my computer from a very old 2012 Mac. <laughs> so, and then I think I had like a 2010 10 Wacom. So I had to upgrade because it was all out of date. But um, yeah, I really enjoy the Wacom and super user friendly and pretty affordable compared to a couple other things. Um, we have already a question from Josh, Joshua Tallis asking, have you ever used stock photos for your projects? Yes, I, I do use a lot of stock photos. If it's not my own, I, I usually just go online or I go on Adobe stock and, and peruse in there. <laughs> There's a lot of good uh, free resources online as well. Um, Unsplash is a popular one that I use. Mm -hmm. There are many different libraries. Um, and I think like for free content, that's the one that I go to. And 
what I love about Adobe Stock is that you can literally search within the app. Mm -hmm. It's it's super handy for sure. Okay, so I have basically masked out <laughs> all the multiple me's. Um, but now what I'm going to do is since I don't need these two legs because I have my other legs, I'm just going to mask those out because I'm going to be replacing them. So I'm just going to do a general like this. And I'm also going to mask out this arm because I have a different arm. And I'm kind of doing it a little bit rough right now just because I want to get the general idea of what I'm going to look like. I think it's better not to, I always say as well, like don't focus too much into the details until you're set on what Definitely. you're going to be using. What do you have there as a magic wand? Oh, sorry. It's probably really loud. Um, this is just my little Wacom pen. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying like in your photo. Oh, you have like my a magic wand. <laughs> I was like, this is my magic wand. <laughs> um, that is actually my, my Harry Potter wand that I bought in Universal when I went in January of 2020. So just before the pandemic, which is kind of a funny story, but um, yeah, my family is kind of um, like theme park crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Universal a few years ago. Actually, it was like 10 years ago now. Um, and it was one of my favorite vacations of all time. So we decided, you know what? We're all adults. We all make our own money. We're going to we're going to go on vacation to, <laughs> to Harry Potter World and Universal Studios and Isles of Adventure and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And that's where I got my wand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real certified Harry It's a Potter certified, <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I actually didn't even buy it in the park. I think I bought it at like the hotel <laughs> gift shop <laughs> because I wanted to bring it the next day. And, yeah. Absolutely. A must have. And you're, you're moving very quickly here with oh. your... With, I know. I mean, it's amazing. It's just like I love the way that you're um, bringing all the different you together. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of see in my head what I want it to look like, and then just kind of go from there, basically. Um, so as you can see, like I have my my little floating legs, so it looks a little bit more like I'm floating in the water. At least that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're going to get this arm, too. That's and I'm, I'm clicking X to uh, pivot between the two colors, which is a helpful thing as well. Yeah, and I think that they are uh, on a little bit on my right side here. You can see the, the swatches panel moving uh, when you click the X from, yes. from black and white for your masks. So you tend to isolate each different part of your body usually? Yeah. Um, it depends on what I'm making. Oopsie. Which one am I doing? Oh, that's not what I want. <laughs> Undo. Um, sorry, I'm trying to... It's hard <laughs> talking and working at the same time. But um, yeah, like sometimes I can, when I'm taking the picture, of myself of whatever I want it to be, I can get it in one pose. Um, that's not often the case. Um, like looked at the one of Alice in Wonderland where I'm falling, I actually took a million different pictures of me <laughs> jumping on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I ended up having one that I liked and was able to use that as the entire picture. So I just Oh, wonderful. The whole thing, yeah. It paid off. <laughs> it did. It was, hurt my head just a tiny bit, but not too bad. So, yeah, here is kind of the general... Sure. Jeez, throw on my and, pen. And we have a question uh, from Ferry asking, what camera do you use and what lens? So I, honestly, if you're on a budget, iPhones work really really well i have used my iphone for a lot of pictures 
Um, sometimes you can go on video, go on um, 120 frames per second, which is slow mo, and get try to get your pose however you want, and then you can go in and screenshot and get the exact pose that you want. Um, otherwise, I have a Sony um, Alpha 6300, which is a couple years old now, actually, <laughs> and I've been wanting to upgrade for a while, but just haven't really had the money for it um, or been able to justify it too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I use that. I have a generic kit lens. I also have a very cheap, uh, like $80, um, 35 millimeter lens that I've used that one I just bought off Amazon and it works pretty well uh, for this one. I think yeah, I use the kit lens. So it's a 16 to 55, which is what it comes with. And do you have any like uh, reasoning between which camera are you go like going to use for the project? Do you know what I had, or just uh, like experimentation and then take different photos with different cameras and see what works best? A little bit of that. Um, usually, if it's something that I need to have a little bit higher quality, like if it's something more close up, like this one's a little bit more close up, and it's also um, I'm going to be doing probably a lot more to this as well. So I would go in and have like my better camera quality. I'm trying to think of what I normally, what other edits I've used with my iPhone. I can't think about it right now, but um, yeah, I mean, usually if it's something where I'm really small in the piece, iPhone will be just fine. Okay, so let's go in and get some hair going out. My... Allison says you're my new hero. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, Ferry is uh, sharing some love for the Sony Alpha, saying the camera is very sharp. Nice. So I actually need to flip this image because it's the opposite. <laughs> I didn't even think about that when I was taking it. So another fun thing that you can do with Photoshop is you might think, okay, how in the world am I going to mask out all of this detail? Like this is something that I didn't know about for the longest time because I just didn't know about it. Um, but what you can do is I'm going to start out with just kind of getting the basic mask out of the hair. And I didn't um, <laughs> come up with this idea either. I don't want to take credit or say like I was the first person that invented doing hair this way. Um, I'm trying to remember who I saw do this and it's not coming to me, but if anyone knows, let me know. <laughs> well, I think there are so many different um, tutorials or uh... I mean, that's what I was kind of telling you before, like everybody adopts like different way of using the tools. So I think that once you start to get it uh, in, inside your project, it becomes yours anyway, in terms of like, you know, the way that you use it for your project. Um, just a quick advice to everyone, make sure you save. <laughs> so I'm gonna save. <laughs> I have made that mistake a number of times of not saving enough. Um, Great reminder. So yeah, for this hair to make it really uh, get the mask looking good, we can go select and mask. And then there's this thing called refine edge brush, which if you have been in Photoshop enough, you probably know, but you can just go in and you can kind of take away all of the white. Sometimes, so it basically, picks the color and then takes away everything of that color essentially and it's not perfect either which is a little annoying and there's other ways to do this um this is just the way that i usually do it there's probably a more sophisticated way <laughs> but yeah just kind of and i'll probably have to go back in at some point and bring some of this back because it's not gonna be perfect 
Well, that's the beauty of masks that you work not destructively. Uh huh. Uh, I'm very embarrassed to say that I <laughs> took the the long route a lot of times before I knew what masks actually were, and I would work very destructively and actually <laughs> erase things. <sighs> yeah, I learned the hard way. <laughs> that's the best way. <laughs> yeah, I think you make like. Uh, you know the best memories and like you know like we were saying before make sure to save your file yep. I, trust me i still do that mistake <laughs> <laughs> um so once you go over with the select or what did i just say the refine edge tool um if you go into gotta move my things around you go into overlay on your brush and then you kind of go over what you already did I don't know what the science is behind this, but <laughs> it takes like an extra little layer of what you just took away. So it's still not fully taking away the hair. It's just kind of cleaning up what I already did, which is super nice. And Ferry is asking, who is your favorite photographer or artist? Oh, gosh, that's hard. Um. I really like, um, so on Instagram, there's this, this, this lady, her name is, um, Miss Katie English. I don't know. I think it's Katie, Caddy, Katie. Um, but she has been very inspirational to me. Um, she does a lot of, um, you know, Harry Potter mermaids and all of that fun stuff. So she's just kind of an online Instagram artist that I've been following for a while and um, really enjoy her work. Um, oh man, I'm on the spot. <laughs> it's hard to. Pick. And um, uh, Fairy's also mentioning Life of Avex, of course. Vanessa oh Rivera. yes. Oh my gosh, I love I love her work as well. She I think was one of the first um, Photoshop compositors that I followed when I started getting more into this. And I would just look at her work and be like how did she do that <laughs> i honestly like how in the world is she so good she's super amazing i had the chance to meet her when we were at adobe max when still mm -hmm. we were allowed to, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to do the wonderful uh, live events and uh she's super cool and i think it's lovely the way she works with her kids as well oh i know i love it so. And by the way, Cody Bear, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but Cody Bear has actually shared the link of Miss Cathy uh, English on Instagram. So for those of okay. you who want to go ahead and check awesome. one of uh, Laurel's favorite artists, you can go ahead and click on the link. And just a quick reminder that if you're watching on YouTube, jump on be.net slash live and I'm going to be able to read your question and pass it on to Laurel and you're going to be able to participate to the live with your comments and I'm going to be here reading and replying live. <laughs> All right, we're going to put the hair on my body now. <laughs> Is that your usual workflow? Like you start from your body to the hair? Do you have like step, some regular step that you do? I kind of just wing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, I think I normally typically work like me first and then the rest of the composite just because I don't know that's just kind of how I've always done it I guess mm -hmm. um but yeah like with this one there's a couple more things that are gonna go into it so it might have to be this one I might have to place things to some extent and then start rearranging I am very ADD and get ahead of myself a lot of times <laughs> so I'm like oh I I try to like rush through things when I'm like, I don't need to rush. Like, why am I rushing myself? You get but, like passionate about certain aspects. I, yeah, I get so excited that I'm like, I want to see it done. I want to see the final thing. But like to actually enjoy it a little bit more. Um, so as you can see, I'm actually a little out of focus compared to my hair like if you zoom in i think that's just because the hair was taken closer up than this but 
think from far away it'll be okay. <laughs> Again, it's it's not always gonna be perfect, which is just fine. It's fine. Um, okay, so I have me kind of figured out for the most part. So let's go in and find some other things to do. And I had a question for your sketch. Did you did you do the sketch right away in Photoshop or? Yep, I just drew that right in um, to Photoshop with my little Wacom. So, yeah, I mean, you could you could draw it by hand, like on paper, and like scan it in or something too. But usually, and even sometimes, if I have an idea and I just wanted to get it on to some kind of like paper, I'll even just do a note on my phone and sketch with my finger just so I can have that idea in my head solidified. Does it happen to you like a weird time of the day or the night? <laughs> <laughs> it's always at like 1am when I should be sleeping. <laughs> it's a curse, I saw you. So yeah, I mean, um, so one thing that we'll need to do is Harry also has like these little fins when he turns into a when he takes the gillyweed or whatever and he turns into a little fish person. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one really cool thing that I actually learned from uh, Miss Katie English on Instagram is she uses goldfish to make mermaids and um, like mermaid tails and stuff, which is also something that I have done. And it honestly, it is like just so genius and like how did I not think of this <laughs> That's so, so cool. I think what we'll do for this is we'll do two and we'll do uh one fin and then the other fin also we have Georgie Crummer saying Laura you're killing it so <gasps> proud of you <laughs> thank you I actually grew up with Georgie we were neighbors a long time ago which is kind of funny, so. <laughs> Hi, Georgie. <laughs> um, I yeah, think it's so feel... great that, sorry. No, you go ahead. I was just saying it's so great that like, you can merge yourself to like a fish and you <laughs> can make these up and I think it's so exciting. Oh, thank you. So I think I'll take this one to the left and then the right, so we'll see. And honestly, it's a little trial and error. I mean, figuring out, let's see, I need to make this a little. So I think for this fin, do something like that. Another thing I like to do if I'm feeling lazy is just go like that and then mask. <laughs> <laughs> And then I usually go in later and touch all these up. But for now, I think. So it'll be something like that. And then once we color correct, it'll look better. <laughs> we'll keep it like that. Is that your go-to fish? Like, uh, or you have like different ones that, that are already in your um, libraries? Not really. I mean, it's similar. I just picked this one because of the fins mostly. Um, mm -hmm because these fins are pretty awesome. Um, usually I will go with just like any generic goldfish. I will definitely be using this one um, in the future because I hadn't seen this one before. And it's a nice, nice little fish. Fergie saying, this is such a clever hack. Totally <laughs> going to try and make a mermaid using a goldfish image. There you go. Again, I did not come up with that, <laughs> but. I will pass along the information. I never want to take credit for something that I didn't start. <laughs> I think it's important to give artists credit where, where it's due. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other favorite artists that I have. There's so many. It's I follow a lot of them on Instagram. Um, I guess I'm blanking on what his name is, but he is a surrealist artist that I learned about in high school, which is actually where I first um, started doing all these composites was in high school. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to take, it was called computer art back in the day. <laughs> um, a very, uh, I don't know, kind of funny title, just, just so generic nowadays. like. 
looking back, it's like there, there's so much computer art. It's so diverse. There's graphic design, there's Photoshop, there's digital illustration. Like it's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, but yeah, I was first introduced to Photoshop there and we did a lot of surrealism stuff and we learned, um, yeah, we learned about what surrealism, surrealism is. And I can't, if anyone knows who this artist is, um, he's famous for, um, he was paintings, I think oil, but he does um, like butterflies as sails on ships and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of that kind of stuff. He's, I can't remember what so his So what I'm is. doing is literally going through the people that you follow <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, if you see anyone else, that's really, really cool. Um, I know I'd have to, I'm like blanking. I, I'm so sorry if I'm blanking on your on your Instagram handle right now, but um, there's so many good ones that I follow. You could probably go through and I need to do another like shout out for all these cool artists <laughs> because there's some really, really talented people. I'm so bad with names as well. Like I, <laughs> I, I think it's terrible every time that I want to reference to someone or something. I'm just like, you know, uh, and I just can't remember completely blanks. Names are not my thing. <laughs> exactly. It's something with the, uh, like the handle too. Sometimes I'll read the oh, handle yeah. differently than it's actually. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why, but. Oh, you follow a lot of cool photographers as well. I'm just literally mm -hmm. stalking the people you follow. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, I I was really interested in, I mean, I still am interested in photography too, but um, I was, I started following a lot of photographers a few years ago um, just to like gain inspiration and learn. It's Photography is such a learning curve. I think about where I am now versus where I started. I'm like, I had no idea what anything was. <laughs> like, I didn't know what an f-stop was. And if you don't know what that is, it's it's fine. Like, it's it's a very confusing medium to learn, and it's really easy to get discouraged. And you just need to keep plugging away. And there's so much free free information on youtube it's that'll be your best friend i get a lot of questions like yeah like how do i learn like how do i do this i'm like just trial and error practice youtube honestly like it's youtube will be your friend um i'll shout out another guy his name is um picks imperfect he's a youtuber that does um photoshop tutorials so he's really he has a lot of really good um ideas and stuff and that's kind of where i learned to do um curves adjustments which i'll show you at some point about how to do that and how i do my highlights and color correcting the so, power of youtube tutorials <laughs> i know <laughs> seriously and it's free which is amazing so um yes. the world is really at your fingertips okay so let's add some more I was thinking that like I need to do some cliffs. I think I'm going to do some kelp in the foreground, kind of like bokeh, like blurry in the background or foreground, I should say, in the background. Um, so we'll do this guy. And normally I try to name my layers, but like I said, I tried, I get so speedy <laughs> that I forget to, to do that, but for now, I think we'll be okay. It's something that you usually go back and do it to a certain point, or once you're like focused on the work, you don't bother and you just keep, keep going. Sometimes if I'm like, okay, which one is it? And I'm clicking on all these, I'm like, okay, I should probably just rename these to make my life easier. I tend to just make my life harder than it needs to be sometimes. Um, okay, so we need to figure out where to put this one. Exactly. And by the way, I was asking before to Laurel um, and I'm going to now tell the chat because Laurel was kind enough to, to be open to this opportunity. If you do during the stream have any idea or you really think that we should add a specific 
item or something that you think that belongs or you want to just contribute to the to the composite feel free to shout out some idea and we'll see if today or maybe tomorrow uh, we can bring your ideas to life in the composite as well definitely so i'm just kind of adding in the different elements that i know i'm gonna need um it's already looking so cool. Like even when you were <laughs> when you were moving yourself around the the canvas with like with the fins, I'm like, oh, oh, thanks. She's flying around. <laughs> I'm just flying through the water. Um, I do really like this. I think that's a really cool. That'll look like a cool mermaid temple. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna need to move some of these around. So. Let's go and let's mask out this guy. Oh, I've seen the little octopus as well. Oh yeah, we'll do. I was thinking maybe like a like coming up from the the bottom or something. Like it's about to grab me. Have you seen the the movie about the? I think it's called My Teacher Octopus. I need to Google it. Oh no. Ah, oh, super. Let me see. Let me let me give you the right title first. <laughs> My octopus teacher, of course, I swap words around, but like, I don't think I've heard of that. Ah, uh, it's a lovely, it's a documentary. I don't want to give too much away, but it's oh. a lovely documentary about the life, the real life of an octo, of a real octopus. So, cute. Um, yes, it's a very romantic story. Oh, funny! Oh my gosh, I but... wanted to be a marine biologist for a long time. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um... And then I realized that I had to take like chemistry and math <laughs> and I was not good at those subjects. I was like, you know, maybe that's not for me. I, I saw the movie, um, the cove, I think it's called, it's like about like dolphins. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a sad movie about dolphins, <laughs> go watch it. But, um, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go and save all the, save all the dolphins. And well, you found a way to get yourself underwater. Anyway. Exactly. I'm, I'm underwater now. So that's, and, Zero chemistry. <laughs> exactly. No yeah. math required. Stay in school, kids. But yeah. I'm... Oh, Alison I'm is uh, an oceanographer. Oh. That's so cool. That Alison, is amazing. tell us more. Yeah. Do you actually know what an oceanographer is, Laura? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think it, it's the study of oceans, pretty much, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Or a charting oceans? Let us know, Alison. I know. I'm like, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to get it wrong. Everyone's like, what are you talking about? You're not right. <laughs> so she say yes, ma'am. So I guess that you got it right for both. Uh, nice. Definition. Super I'll cool. <laughs> oh, I'm not on the right layer. Oopsie. What happens? I feel like everyone knows that struggle. So I'm just taking some of this away so I can see more of what's under. I'm trying to figure out how I want to organize this a little bit more. Because this is another thing that's helpful with the um, this mask. Maybe I'll put this up here so you can see. So it is helpful to go back and reference your um, like sketch, I guess, because <laughs> it's like, okay, I remember now, like I need to put that there and that there. So I think I also went in originally and already cut out this kelp just to save some time. So, And then I think I'll duplicate these layers a few times. So. Just so we can recycle. I'm just like, oh my gosh, that, that, where this is gonna go? Where this is gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> I know. If you have any ideas of where I should put things, let me know. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of just organizing it the best I can for now, and then it, it's almost like it becomes what it wants to. You know, you know what I mean? Like you might have an example, or you might have 
like an idea of what you want something to look like and then it just turns into something something else <laughs> you just go with the flow and um see how, how yeah. things work out together because i mean when you're floating like that you can just depend on where you move yourself i think perspective can change and yep <laughs> exactly um and then, yeah a lot of times i'll like i'll go in here since I'm not working destructively, which is what you should be doing, is not working destructively like I used to. Um, so since this is a smart object, I can go in and like, I usually just do Gaussian blur. Sorry, there's like these little gnats for my st stupid plants that I have in here. They're bothering me. Um, but I go in and usually, oh, I am not, hold on. That's because I need to create a new smart object because it had the mask on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I usually just go in and gosh and blur. And then that makes it look like it's in the foreground a little bit. Just kind of fades out a little. Mm -hmm. And then and I'll also... do that for the background as well. We have more love for you from Maddie Wittenberg saying, so hey! proud of you. <laughs> love you, bestie. You're doing amazing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is my best friend, Maddie. So thank Aww. you, Maddie. That's we so have sweet. been friends for since sixth grade when our lockers were next to each other. <laughs> oh, that's super <laughs> sweet. Hi, Maddie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um. Okay, let's see here. I'm like, sometimes you get to this part and you're like, what do I do? And then you just kind of have to play around with things and move them around. So I think I need to make this clip bigger. And sometimes I will go back into like me. So since I have all of me in a group, I'm going to do an adjustment layer to that group. So let's do, hmm. So what we could do, and that's the thing with Photoshop that's both amazing and sometimes infuriating is there's so many ways you can do things like so many infinite ways of doing whatever you want. Like here, I'm just changing the color basically and I can go into green make it a little bit more green like already that looks more like it's fitting there's other ways you can do this um I think for this one I'm not going to do a curve because it's too drastic of a <laughs> change to go underwater um like we could do a hue saturation oops something like that like already that looks better and then if i don't really like that i can always do that so do you watch a lot of underwater documentaries or like um I, yeah i would say i mean i definitely used to a lot um what's it called ocean no um blue planet or planet blue planet yeah. i think that's yeah, the I one think so um, they've got really good music in that too. I don't know if I like this exactly. Do but I do want, oh, sorry, go ahead. Now I was just asking, do you listen to any specific music while, while you work? Um, podcasts or I'm a big fan of like movie score. <laughs> so I'll be listening to like some crazy, like Avengers music or something. So it helps, uh, keep me going sometimes. I don't know if I like that. I think I do want to keep a little bit of the color here because it's not completely undersaturated like that. So let's delete that. Another fun thing I like to do is um, there's a thing called color lookup. If you're familiar with video at all, um, you might know what a LUT is. That basically just means lookup table. And it's basically just a filter. Um, so Photoshop also has these fun little basically filters. Um, so you could go in and oh, 
like that one looking pretty good um tension green maybe moonlight so you could always play around with that um and this is something i like to do at the very end is it almost ties everything together so like at the very end when i'm all finished with the whole thing which i can talk about this more tomorrow too but i just like to put on see how it kind of makes it look a little bit more tied together i mean obviously i wouldn't pick these filters i'm just choosing random ones but it's just kind of fun to tie the whole thing and make it look like it's a little bit more seamless but for now okay let's see i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go in and edit the light a little bit because our light source is from up here and the window when i was taking this picture was a little bit more like this so i think i need to kind of cut out some of this light a little bit i think i might make the light a little bit from the side i've, I've noticed when i do these comp uh, composites that it tends to help me if the light's coming from the side rather than above and i don't know why um it's just kind of what i found so maybe do is that something they usually plan ahead when you search your photos or you just work with what you have yeah i definitely i try to think ahead as much as possible um i mean for for this example like i found this image of this temple and it's a really cool <laughs> temple and i couldn't really find anything that exact shape or whatever so I'm gonna have to just use it. But like, I'm trying to think of another good example. But usually when I'm finding images, I like to find them that have kind of the similar lighting. So either not a lot of shadows or not, a, it's like an overcast sky, the light's coming from the same direction or you can always flip the images. Mm -hmm. So like this temple, I could flip it um, and make, cause like right here, the sun is coming from right here because the shadows are falling right there. So that one's okay. And these ones too. Here's the highlight, the shadows on this side. So the light's kind of coming from there. The lighting is going to be the biggest thing I've found, um, especially with photography. Photography is just painting with light. So making that light look as accurate as possible is going to be your friend. <laughs> And we have Cody Bear sharing your Instagram again. If you haven't, uh, if you just joined during the stream, make sure to head uh, on Instagram at Laurel Street, and you'll be able to see all the amazing composite that she already published on her Instagram. And hopefully, we're going to see this one at the end as well. So make sure to go ahead and give her a follow because we uh, were just showing at the beginning of the stream all her wonderful, wonderful art. So. Thank you. <laughs> the link is there. So I did rename the kelp. <laughs> I was tired of clicking on them and figuring out what it is. I'm just going to name it. It's time to castle. give it a name. It's time to give it a name. <laughs> oh no, look at all that white. So I think it's going to, sometimes you need to rearrange the layers and then you're like, oh, that's, that's not what I want. That's the beauty of the mask. You can always exactly. erase and fix. I know. It's the biggest lifesaver, honestly. So let's make. And also speaking of Max, uh, sorry, Max, um, masks and all the other amazing Photoshop trick, I want to um, invite everybody to join the Photoshop Discord channel. So Cody Bear, I've just seen, has put a, a link in the chat uh, for um, the Photoshop Discord, which is the wonderful community where you can share your work, get feedback. And most importantly, if you take part to the wonderful Photoshop creative challenges, which are now running with the lovely Kathleen Martin, you're going to be able to share your work and get feedback from the wonderful international community and all the Adobe live mentors. So the link is bit.ly 
slash PS Discord is there in the chat. And again, make sure to watch and join us if you are right here watching us live on Behance or B.net slash live. So you get all those clickable links. And of course, you can ask your questions here to, to Laurel about our composite, about Photoshop, about life as a, I, are you a freelance, correct? Uh, um, I actually, so I currently work a full time, like nine to five. Okay. Um, but I've been doing a little bit more freelance actually, which has been really cool. I get, um, I started doing some commissions online or I guess like on um, Instagram and I've had a few people reach out and ask for either like, oh, can you Photoshop this person out of this picture? Or can you, I don't know, make me look like I'm in a field of flowers, which I just did <laughs> recently, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's been actually really cool. Um, it just goes to show that you can make money doing art. Um, no one told me I could when I was growing up, which is super annoying. Um, they always said, get a real job. <laughs> so here I am. I'm, I'm... They need to add that in the computer art class. Exactly. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> like, by the way, artists can make money. They're not just all poor and sad. I mean, some of them are, but like I, I kind of am. But I'm not sad. I'm, very, very happy. <laughs> I'm not sad. I love that. I, I, yeah, I mean, I just, I do this for fun. That's kind of how it has started. And if it becomes not fun, then I won't do it anymore. But for now, it's, it's, I really enjoy it. Um, and I would like to keep doing it. <laughs> how can you be sad when you're floating and <laughs> floating have like water. Harry Potter one? It's like, that's <laughs> just such a magic way of living. And like, it's, and that's the thing. What it's, is sadness? <laughs> I exactly. I am very much a believer of escapism and fantasy is way more fun. So <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm team denial. So. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I'm like, I would rather read a book than read the news. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's like I just I don't know. Like reading, I was a huge reader as a kid. I still am. It's just, you know, being an adult is time consuming. <laughs> so, you know, I, I grew Who up reading that when you have fairy tales. Exactly. And like I grew up reading like Harry Potter, series of unfortunate events. Um, like, I don't even know all of all of those books, Aragon, Book Thief, like all of that stuff. Like it's I do enjoy reading and it's obviously impacted me quite a bit. <laughs> I have a little yeah. message for the chat because Daria apparently is having some issues with uh, the Discord server is packed. You can join. You can join. Yeah, absolutely, Daria. Um, I don't know what uh, the problem might be that you're in Korea. I know that Cody is there in the chat. Uh, hope, hopefully be able to help you out, but you can absolutely join um, the community is growing and growing. And that's the beauty of it. The more the merrier. So the fact that it's jam packed of a many, many uh, talented artists from all over the world, Ta artists and uh, students and professional is such a broad, wonderful community uh, that definitely um, try to join. And I hope that is going to work out for you. So um, just just use the, the short short link that is there in the chat and hopefully you'll be able to join the wonderful community have you ever had a, a go with a discord channel i have not actually um naughty <laughs> it's a oh no it's it's a it's a cool place to be uh but i i recommend to everybody just like hang out there sometimes because you, you you literally see work from all over the world which i think is super exciting oh that's really cool that's really neat. Oh, it's mm. happening. We it's happening. Like <laughs> I love it. You're like the best hype person ever. <laughs> I get excited it's a lot happening. with this. <laughs> um, I kind of glazed over this when you were talking, but um, I really like working with curves. Um, that's probably... I don't know if it's the fastest it's for me there's again there's so many ways you can do things but like 
if I just pull down that curve right there, like it automatically just starts making it look like it fits more. And the cool thing with curves is you can kind of do it all in one. So like you can do the lighting and you can do some of the basic color. So like, oh, boom, underwater. Mm. Yeah, I mean. We have a, a little tip from Praveen asking to add a starfish. Ooh, where should I put it? Yes, Praveen, where should we put the, the, the starfish? Let us know in the Maybe chat. Yeah, on a cliff. I could add another rock or something. I would have it on your shoulder, but that just means you being a weird person. <laughs> You're just hanging out. I, like, I you know, actually... like a pir pirate is a, like a parrot. Yeah, oh my gosh. just hanging out. I thought about doing um, like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a squid mark. Oh, like yeah. A suction mark on my arm. <laughs> a grindelo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Um, so we kind of have basic... This, I think I'll move this guy around at some point, but um, let's go back in and do the fins. Like, obviously this is a little messy still, so I need to go in and clean up this phantom halo thing. So this is the time now where you kind of um, figure it out that the positioning of different elements where you go and start to dive in into the details a little bit more exactly all right we'll go and name these so i'm going to make a group for the fins and then i can just kind of work with them together i need to figure out oh how did you do that one. how did you put them in a group oh so i just quickly. um let's see here let's undo so I highlighted both of them. I used shift and click, and then you click this little folder right there, and then group two. Boom. Enable it, fins. <laughs> Boom. And then we'll do, we'll call this one seaweed. Get that out of there for now. So we're gonna have to clean this up, make it look like it blends into my foot a little bit more. But first, let's do a little bit of color correction as well. <laughs> Curves. And then this is the fun little button right here. So if I were to not click that, it would do the entire picture, which we do not want. We want it on this individual layer. So that's like a clipping mask, I think, technically. Mm -hmm. this. Yes. Adjustment clip is what it's called. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll have to put that down. And everything is a little different because these fins are very orange. And it might take a couple extra layers to adjust these. Um, so actually, let's just do a basic one first, see where we're at. Yeah, so obviously that didn't do too much. So I need to go in and probably do like a saturation. Ah, there we go. Get some of that orange out of there. Maybe <laughs> Let's see what happens if no, that's too much. So yeah, it's really just playing around with things. And when things are underwater, they lose saturation. So and it's a little bit darker and moodier. So we want it to be a little, a little more mysterious. And you see with my leg, there's not a lot of like bright colors really. So Let's do me as well. Let's go back to that. <laughs> me. I love that you use yourself for these wonderful scenes, you know, because everybody, I mean, the majority of the compositor that I've seen, is that even a word? Do you say compositor? Yeah, I would say. Yeah, compos yeah. yeah. sorry. I'm, I usually make up a lot of words. I'm like, yeah, uh, that's probably. <laughs> but um, I've seen many people uh, using like just stock photos for their characters. I think it's super amazing that you use yourself for this, like, fairy tale Thank stories. You. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, as I know, there's so many talented artists and what they do is amazing. But yeah, it's, it's like, if to me, it feels more personal. It feels, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know how the, the right word to describe it. It's like, it's, it's really my work. Like, I'm not using like someone else, like a model or something. I'm using like me. 
<laughs> so it's your know. adventure it's my adventure exactly i want to go on my own adventure um okay now we can go in i this is probably one of my favorite parts honestly so since you can see this lighting just doesn't quite match up like this is too bright this is too bright so and like my hand should probably be a little bit brighter because this light is hitting it right there so i'm gonna go in there's a few ways you can do this but for this one i think i'm gonna go into exposure and i'm gonna take down the exposure until these highlights aren't quite as bright. So I think that's good. And then I probably do this the wrong way, but <laughs> um, I start with the adjustment I want. So like I'm taking the exposure down and then I'm going to do G for the bucket, <laughs> fill it all in. And then I'm gonna, um, so it's back to where I was, you know? So like this doesn't even like do anything now. And then I can go X to change out that, go back to B for brush. And then this is probably like the longest way to do it, but <laughs> this is what I do. And then I'm gonna take this opacity brush around 10 or 11. And then I'm just going to paint in some of the uh, darkness, I guess. So like this is where I really need it. So you say this is like your um, the part that you enjoy the most? Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's like painting again, and it's it it's when it really starts to come together. It's once you do this part, and I don't know. It's just really satisfying to <laughs> to see it like start to actually come together more. Sorry if you can hear my boyfriend on the phone. That work from home life. I think we're fine. And okay. in the meantime, I want to say hello to Valdair Leonardo. Valdair, thank you so much for joining us. Also, Akansha is here. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are tuning in right now, you can see that the lovely Laurel is working on this amazing underwater scene inspired by Harry Potter. And we started with our photo and we built up this fantastic scene um so if you just tuned in that's that's what's going on here it's always weird to hear someone else like describe my what i do or something <laughs> it's like i have the worst imposter syndrome it's, it's like it's like someone calling me an artist it's like oh okay yeah i, I guess i am <laughs> Like, I don't know, I just don't, sometimes I don't feel like I'm good enough to be considered an artist or a writer or whatever it is, you know. Well, I mean, you create these m wonderful stories, you know, and I think yeah. it takes a lot of freedom and courage. And to me, those are, I think, you know, definition of artist is very personal. Uh, I, that's my belief. And I think that courage and is one of the, and freedom are some of the, key component of being an artist and I mean that's you creating your adventure underwater so <laughs> of course and you were talking about being an author as well so why don't you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that yeah so I've been a writer for a long long time I started writing um, a book in like eighth grade um, I was voted most likely to write a novel in high school, which is pretty cool. Um, and I uh, sent it out to a lot of different publishers, got a lot of rejections. Um, and so I ended up just <clears throat> publishing on my own with um, Amazon and CreateSpace and Kindle Direct Publishing, um, which is a really fun process and um, something I recommend for anyone that wants to self-publish. Um, again, it's it's been sort of successful. You know, it's it's hard when you have a full-time job and um, you can't like write books full-time <laughs> or anything. So, but that's definitely where one of my passions lie for sure. And I, I like, um, 
you know, writing so much. I think for a long time, I, I thought like that was what I was meant to do on this earth, which I still do, but um, I've now found this, which is another really strong passion of mine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I wanted to go into the Instagram world and I thought, oh, I'll get like a bunch of followers on Instagram and then people will read my book from there. So we'll see if that happens. And but... tell us more about your book then. Tell us your title because oh, I was yeah. Googling. I just want to make sure that is the correct one. So mm -hmm. so it's called Finding Time. Um, it's on Amazon. If you type it in, Finding Time, yep. Laurel Street, uh, it's got an orange cover. Um, it's like a mix between The Hunger Games and The Giver, if you've read that book growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like a dystopian, futuristic, running away from home kind of like Ooh. thing, like government conspiracy, um, survival in the woods, forbidden romance, <gasps> not forbidden romance, but um, uh, I guess you could say like a, a, a common, lovers or enemies to lovers trope which is one of my favorite <laughs> favorite tropes <laughs> uh. absolutely i think we can share a link to your to oh your yeah book. that'd be I great just, have you done the cover yourself i did yeah and that's actually kind of funny i did that so i drew out part of it on paper scanned it in uh and then photoshopped in i took the background image um, and then did like the shadows and stuff. And that is one of those examples of when I was working quite destructively. <laughs> Didn't know what a mask was, was working on Photoshop elements <laughs> back in like, I don't even know how long ago that was now. Long, long time ago. So I'm actually reading here and I think it was 2014, he says. On, mm -hmm. And also I was getting like a little teary eyed because I can see that there is like a like the first page and we can see Maddy. I guess it's the same Maddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, she's one of my biggest supporters and has been for a long, long time. That's very, very sweet. Yes. So it's... go and check out the book. Yes, we have please. the link here on the chat. Cody it's Bear a... has been super kind and put in the link oh, for the you. Amazon. It's also a trilogy, but I only have the first book out right now. So. <laughs> It's it's been a it's hard writing a book. It's the first one is uh, over a hundred thousand words, which um, is about four hundred pages. So, oh wow! I've been trying to trying to get the the sequel close to that word count. I'm at about seventy maybe thousand, um, and then I have I have pretty much the whole entire trilogy mapped out in my head. Um, it's just finding time to finding time to to write it and all that stuff and that's um, so amazing like yeah thank you <laughs> i mean i i've done um i self-published as well a book about oh plants gosh. and it's like 75 pages and it took me a year so <laughs> wow that's so cool i don't know can you manage to it's write so that hard. <laughs> oh yeah it's like when you're saying those numbers like i just imagine the word sweats <laughs> yeah i'm like how do you do that it's, I know, I'm like, authors are like, oh, yeah, it took me a year to write it. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, it took me, like, yeah. 10 years to write this. Uh, I mean, and the thing is with with writing, it's I started writing this in eighth grade when obviously my writing was pretty crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, everything I wrote in eighth grade had to be rewritten, like, after, after that. I love how you, like, brought... The, you know those theme from um the underwater and being a biologist and writing from a very young age like you you kind of carry on your childhood passions which i think is so cool definitely <laughs> thanks yeah i i took a lot of um well, I'm, I'm an english major i majored in english and in college um and children's lit was one of my favorite classes i've ever taken um, we got to read Harry Potter, which is always a good time. Um, but I'm also a, a very, very slow reader. So being an English major and having to read 8,000 books a day, basically, <laughs> is very draining. Um, so it's it, now I get to actually read for fun, which is which is nice. 
Rather you can take your own school. time. And I want to share some of the love that is here in the chat for you. Oh, thank so you. when we're talking about being an artist, uh, we have Ferry saying, come on, we never feel good enough, don't we? And Cody says, you're here with us on the live stream. You absolutely are an Aww. artist. And we have Fergie saying plus one to what Cody said. And um, Ferry said something really, really sweet. I, I'm just going to read it here. Uh, we are born as an art. We're all born as an artist and we decide to keep it or let it go. Oh, that's really cool. So. Yeah, I think we lose a lot. I mean, back to what you were saying about like back to childhood is we lose so much of our imagination and it's basically like stamped out of us in school and in life. Like, sitting in a classroom for eight hours a day, sitting at a desk for eight hours a day, like how could you ever foster any kind of creativity like that? So I think it's important to remember like how it was when we were kids and how fun it was and how your imagination just gets away from you and you just can be immersed in these worlds. And, and that's why I love reading so much is like it can transport you into another world. And just keeps that anywhere. alive anywhere you want to go and that's why I love Photoshop too because I can create anything I want <laughs> so very saying also I really want to be a child again with some art knowledge that I have right now <laughs> there you go that'd that's, be so cool get your experience <laughs> and then go back be a kid and like yep oh, wanted that for a long only. time <laughs> <laughs> if only if only mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just cleaning up some of these, I don't know what they're technically called, like halos or... Um. And Lisa Chestnut is saying, my thought exactly, Royal. I've thought that all my life. Mm -hmm. Kind of sad, I don't know. <laughs> but... My, uh, something my dad always says is, rent is due at the first of the month. So it's like, no matter what, you got to pay your bills or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, as much as I agree with that, it's like. You should be like, dad, underwater, we do not have electricity. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> um, here, we do not believe in that. Sorry. Oh. Like, we just mm. do sun rays, sunlight, moonlight. Those are the things that work. Exactly. <laughs> underwater solar power <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool okay so oh, that's part of the background so that looks a little bit better right that's a little bit cleaner um another fun thing you can do with these masks is since i, I kind of already went in and did it by hand but sometimes when you have like an object like i have me on top of everything else it looks like it was just like pasted there and it doesn't look like it's in the environment so what you can do is like let's do let's do a close-up of this one you can click double click on the mask and then you can take this feather and it doesn't work very great because there's that white but if i were to uh get more of that white out but see how it, it goes from being super crisp to just a little bit more soft around the edges um that's something i like to do as well just to make it look like it's more in the environment i don't know if you can kind of tell like if you look at my arm here i mean it's a little bit extreme but you can you know that's just, so cool just like a little even just like 0.5 makes it look just a little bit better because you got the like density that. of the water almost like coming through exactly yeah definitely all right so i cleaned up that we're gonna save um let's do let's work on these fins a little bit more i was like is that a sea turtle <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah can we put you in here <laughs> 
then yeah, I have a couple. I, I'll add some like <clears throat> some fish and stuff too. I think for this castle. Once again, I'm just kind of rearranging things as it goes. Um, that looks so perfect, like for underwater, like Atlantis lost <laughs> city. I love documentaries. I, I, there is a new documentary that I was watching, which I think is, uh, I don't remember the name, but it's all about like night. Um, some, I need to find out the name, but it's, it's all about like a uh, night filming in nature in different like in the ocean in the forest in the jungle they're basically just exploring new technology of trying to oh. film like when it's very very dark at night and you know and my one of my favorite was of course like night in the ocean where you get all oh. these wonderful like rocks that look like cities and yeah i mean Gosh. i'm sure i'm sure you know what i'm talking about <laughs> i think so yeah that sounds really interesting i need to get back into those documentaries I end up just watching the friends like 87 times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going in and kind of adding these colors back here. And the other thing is like things that are far farther away um, are gonna be less um, colorful. So that's another thing. And that's, um, Something that has helped me is having kind of a general understanding of art in general and like color theory and um, like things in the background are bigger, or sorry, things in the foreground are bigger, things in the background are smaller, you know, just that kind of general stuff <clears throat> that has helped a lot. Um, I was a big art geek <laughs> in high school and middle school and all that. So I'm lucky enough to have, have a little bit of understanding of art world foundations yeah so if you don't know where to start i would start with just like basic art concepts honestly and then I, I cut the seaweed out using the same method i did it with the hair with the refine edge tool and this one was a little easier because it was on like a stark white <laughs> background which is nice so Fergie is giving us a very cute idea, which we can do today or tomorrow. Okay. Um, a little seahorse could be cute in the foreground by the seaweed or swimming near you like you had a friend. Oh, I like that. Oh, okay. Let's find a, a seaweed. Or sorry, a seahorse. So let's see if I can go into the stock. So let's do images, seahorse. And by the way, let me, oh, I mean, cute. you already found one there, but um, uh, there, there is a quick trick to find like stuff that is with a white background. Like if you, if you put a word isolated next to it, uh, so seahorse and then isolated, it usually gives you the one that have um, like no background. Ooh, or... oh, there you go. Nice. I usually type in like PNG, so like, you know, transparent oh, yeah. background, but that one doesn't usually. That one's pretty cute. <laughs> oh They're gosh, so fun. The spiny one. They're such a mysterious creatures, aren't they? They're bizarre. I don't know, this one maybe? Does it look dead? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like dried out. Does it That's... look dried out, maybe? <laughs> I like the purple ones on top, somewhere on top, I think. Oh, yeah, that. that's a good one. We got the yellow ones, they're different as well. Up to you. Up, totally up to you. I, I kind of like all. the spiny one, but... Oh, gosh. It's, it's your friend, so... It's my friend, I get to your pick. Your pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this it? Sometimes these are drawings, too. Like, yeah, this is a, it's a drawing. Do Let's you ever mix do. like photo and drawings? Usually not. Um, if it's a real enough, like that one, if it's far enough away, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Mm -hmm. um, or like if it's something like a window frame, I think maybe that could be okay, <laughs> you know, because it's you can build the 
um, the shadows around it or anything like that. So. Hmm. It's hard to choose. I want like a key. Maybe the yellow one. Maybe you're on this one. Okay. And I think that the those are those are all together, yeah. So Okay. Let's see. Am I logged in still? Oops. Nope. Not logged in. <laughs> let's get out of this one. And let's do Mm -hmm. no. So another way, if you want me to, like, I don't know if you ever go from from Photoshop directly. Oh, not really, but I yeah. Is there a way to get in there from? Yeah. So if you go to uh, the CC libraries panel, which is mm -hmm. libraries, it should be next to your adjustment. Um, on the right, a little bit on top. It says libraries. Oh, libraries are there. And then from there, when you there is like a search bar on top. Um, you can literally search Adobe Stock um, from there. So let me see. Probably what I will do is to oops, let me see. If you um, if you create a library first, because there is a way in which uh, if you click on the X. Yay, create a library, just call it whatever you want. And then there is a down pointing arrow on the right next to the search bar. Now you can select Adobe Stock from there. Ooh. And then literally use the search bar and just like you did before. So it was like a uh, seahorse. So. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. And here they are. So you can literally, if you click plus, um, I think, on the one that we wanted before, oh, or yeah. anyone, anyone, okay. they just added they um, they go directly into the library, and then you simply drag them into your artwork. Come here, Start. and then whenever you're ready, you can license it if you want to. Oh, look at that! Sorry, I get excited about <laughs> libraries. I'm like, <gasps> that's pretty cool. Okay, let's do my geek moment. <laughs> <I have to laughs> <That's go>. Okay. <laughs> Let's do, we'll just go in here for now. Logged into the right one this time. Okay. And then does it, does it automatically update? I don't know if you, uh, I will usually, I would usually just <laughs> click on the little cart there where you were to see there was like a little cart. So you sort of, does it from there? I don't know if it's the same. If you're logged, depends depends what sort of login you have in the app, which account uh, you have in the app. So I may have to play around with that at some point. But maybe for now, like you know, I usually um, use the version with the watermark while I'm working, and then you can, at the very end, um, license it afterwards. Hmm. Cool. There we'll it is. For now. I'll do that for now. All right, so maybe I'll do this one. Sorry, I'm, I'm giggling at Cody quoting my geek moment. <laughs> I just slid something. I love the subject thing. It's honestly so handy. Oh, it does all the work. Um. Hmm. One. So my year just, um, I guess it just joined. So my year welcome into the stream and is asking, are you making the underwater scene from Goblet of Fire? I am very, very good. <laughs> I, that used to be one of my favorite Harry Potter movies. It's still up there. Um, I think I just liked it mostly because of that underwater scene. <laughs> <laughs> I just, there's something about just like creepy underwater stuff that I love. Um, but yeah, that's funny. I'm glad that people are, are get, getting that from this so far. <laughs> that's reassuring. I don't know if anyone knows which seahorse I, I could pick. Let me know. I'll leave it up for now and then we can. 
Yes, we have a little delay usually in the chat, so we can ask now and just give a like maybe a couple of minutes so okay. people can uh, yeah. reply. So let us know which is your favorite seahorse. <laughs> They're so cute. Help me pick. <laughs> They're so fun. That is fun. Have you ever seen one like in real life? Uh, not like in the actual ocean, but like in like a um museum or something maybe or like a what do you call it like an aquarium, aquarium. <laughs> i was like why can't i um so you'll notice like all of a sudden it got really dark and weird that's because this clipping mask just came off it does that if you rearrange things so if i just click on clipping mask it goes back to the actual seaweed that i wanted on i've done that before i'll move things around i'm like oh what did i do i just ruined everything <laughs> but it's just the clipping masks. So it's okay. <laughs> Crisis averted. Um, <laughs> I love the feeling of the, like, you can really like almost feel the density of the water. Like it's so, you, we are underwater. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, it's really making that, that like mood a little bit. I don't know, the vibe. I think those will be like such a great present. Like I will literally <laughs> buy it for myself. Like, oh really? Laurel, can I buy like myself a, a portrait Actually. of myself underwater? Yeah. I think that's such a cool idea. True. I could do that. I am also <laughs> thinking about opening like a print shop for my edits. I don't know if people want them of me, if that's like a weird, like, who is this girl? Like, I don't want a random person, <laughs> but I've been thinking about doing that. Um, I have other like photography and illustrations and stuff too that I have been working on. Um, oh, will you be open if someone like send you a photo and be like, hey, can you make me underwater? Because like now I'm yeah. literally being jealous the entire time. I want to <laughs> be there with you. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's when people ask for like, if it's something like this, where it's like you're really building a scene, like I would need like you in this pose like you would have to do the work and take these pictures like make mm -hmm. your leg floating and all that stuff you know so i think that's the part that people are like wait what like <laughs> how yeah. do i do that um but yeah i've had i've had some people reach out and want like some funny some funny edit so, so we have a uh, more questions and uh frank frank bomb just uh, joined us so welcome in Frank thank you so much for joining us don't worry um, this stream is going to be available as usual as a replay so um, and again for those of you who just joined us on YouTube make sure to jump in on Behance or b.net slash live we were going to be able to read the chat and read your questions and in the meantime Maya is asking what about the freaky characters with Trident are you planning to include them as well <laughs> I was thinking about adding those those mermaid people. I was thinking maybe just drawing them in really small in the background cuz I don't want to like take the actual like screenshot from the movie cuz I don't know <laughs> if I would run into any licensing thing there probably. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I could I was thinking of like adding like a couple sharks and like I'm going to add some school of fish. So like here, let's do this. Uh, I added, I have like this shark right here. Let's see what this looks like. I was thinking of, and what we could try, I don't know if this will work exactly, but, oh, didn't want that. A lot of like rearranging <laughs> layers. Also for the seahorse, we have so far a vote for the yellow seahorse. So let us know in the chat, should we use the purple? Laurel, should we use the purple, all the yellow? Which one? Let us know. Uh, which is your favorite seahorse that we're going to make new Laurel, Laurel's best friend in this, in this scene. So <laughs> my little buddy. <laughs> um, so yeah, just like adding a little school of fish. And then let's see if this works. So sometimes screen, nope, that's not gonna work. Just to kind of, you can play around with these different blend modes to, since it's already blue in the water. So I'm like, okay, do any of these like lighten? Hmm. 
And I still have to go through all of these sometimes and because I don't remember what they all do. <laughs> and like they do different things on what layer they're on or what the opacity is and all that stuff. So if anyone has a suggestion of what to do here. Otherwise, I'm just going to go in and kind of just erase the, the edges a little bit and soften it up. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think you can definitely go away by uh, just sort of merging the backgrounds. So cute. My, you're saying magical creatures are necessary, right? Considering it's Harry Potter themed. Exactly. But don't forget that we still have tomorrow. So now we're going to have uh, half an hour um, of work and maybe like we can also walk walk through a little bit of the before and after and so the photo that we started from if you want to um, and uh, then we have like more coming out for tomorrow so if you have more ideas make sure to note it down or let us know today if you want something specific so maybe Laurel can go ahead and dig some special effects so magical creatures sea star um, let us know in the chat and tune in also tomorrow to see all the beauty that is happening here. <laughs> That's so cool. I think it's, it's okay. I wonder if I can... And it's hard to... Hard light. Hey, we're just there. Way. Hanging out in the background. We're just diving around. There we go. That's not bad, right? But that's what happens in the sea. Like, you don't really see... Like in, kind of in shapes. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go in. So with the me, <laughs> whoever this person is, um, well, that's my sketch. I think oh, I still need to add the, the text on the back. I was thinking I could do Potter like he has, but I was like, I got to do my name. Of course. <laughs> got to do my name. I'm like. So we could probably do that tomorrow. Um, but that's another reason why I leave the sketch so that I can always go back and go, oh, yeah, I did want to add mm -hmm. in that that thing. So we do need a little bit work on the fins. So let's find the fins again. So, so it looks like fins. you're inspiring people to do their own things. My, my oh. your wants to do something Lord of the Rings inspired now. Definitely. I highly recommend. <laughs> Can't wait to see. <laughs> Let us know more about we with um, the um, seahorse. I was going to say horse fish. <laughs> the horse fish. <laughs> the horse I mean, fish. Not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know with uh, uh, those lovely seahorse. Which one is your favorite? So far we have voted for the yellow. Okay. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe, I mean, I like the curl on this one. I guess I could put the brightness down too on that one. Maybe he's hanging out like right here or something. Um, so on that, on those fins, so I just took the, the exposure down quite a bit, which makes it fit a little bit more. But I do want to keep a little bit of light on the edges. So I'm going to go in and since I'm only adding a tiny bit of light at the edges, I'm going to just go in with black to reveal and make sure I can, and then just kind of paint in a little bit of light right here. And since fins are kind of see-through, it's almost like the light is coming through just a tiny bit. So magical what little lights does, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Okay. Sort of. <laughs> you can go back and forth. It's mostly the top because that light is hitting that fin right there and then in order to make it match i need to add a couple more highlights on me so let's go back to me 
So if you've been following on since the beginning, you'll you'll notice like I'm going back and forth with things. Um, that's kind of my workflow because I'll realize, oh, <clears throat> now I need to go match this highlight with this or, you know, vice versa. So let's go up and let's do curves again. So you'll notice those are going way up. So trying to debate. So this is our brightest part of our, um, our piece, but that's a pure white. Oh, hold on. So if you want to like figure it out, like that's not even white, right? Like it's not even, I mean, I guess you could get these white pieces, but this is pretty much the brightest spot. So we need to match that light. And then tomorrow I will also show you a trick that I do when I'm um, kind of going through the whole, once everything's done, I'm kind of touching things up and matching up the highlights and shadows. Um, I'll go over one little secret tip that I also do. <laughs> to really make sure the lighting matches up. So you'll have to see, you have to wait. I have to wait until to tomorrow. See. More secrets, more secrets. <laughs> more secrets to come. I love the way that you just like patch the air. Like that was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of, oh, I'm on a different layer now, but yeah. That's the thing, it's like the lighting, like even this this uh, seaweed, I need to go in still and, and get the, I need to take away some of the light on this side because it's too bright. Okay, so here is another, um, I could have done another exposure, which I might do, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go in with my white this time to reveal and add in. It's like taking it away and then adding it back in basically. <laughs> like because the light is coming from the top. So I need to like make the top of my arm like that. Like see how much already that changed it. It's amazing. Like light is so powerful. It really is. It, it makes it breaks the piece, which is a lot of pressure, but. <laughs> And let us know in the chat how many Harry Potter fans do we have? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Basley is saying, good workflow, Laurel. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I forgot that on my leg there. So I think we have about um, like 20 minutes still going so make sure to watch until the end and of course tomorrow we're going to be back here because as laurel has already announced we're going to have more photoshop secrets <laughs> to be revealed and the underwater photoshop secrets yes exactly okay let's add another fun thing you can do for underwater stuff is just adding like a clipping la mask plain and then you take a generic like let's do let's do like this color and i could do um like let's start actually i'm gonna do all the way up and i'm gonna paint it over all of me which looks very silly right but then all of a sudden, that looks like there's actually water, like, on me. <laughs> I love you say, all of a sudden, ta -da! <laughs> Like, it went from that to, it's almost like a fade. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and you can play around with the different, like, a uh, soft light is another good one. So it does, it doesn't affect, um, just affects it a little bit differently. So yeah, I just like to play around. Like 
See how warm the tones are in my arm right here? Like we don't want that. So, like. Cody Bear is asking what Harry Potter house is Laurel in. She seems like a Ravenclaw to me. I want to hear what everyone want, is guessing. It's funny. <laughs> so we have one for Ravenclaw. Well, th that's what Cody Bear is saying. Uh, she's asking what um, what Harry Potter house is Laurel in. She seems like a Ravenclaw. Hmm. I kind of want people to guess, but oh, okay. I don't know. Let's let's have a guess. Let's give him a second, and then I'll and yes. then I'll tell you. Drum roll. I've taken <laughs> eight thousand quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through and trying to figure out. It's I mean, it's uh, experimenting which one looks the best. I usually think overlay can be okay. And we have the lovely Julia Masaska in the chat. I was going to remind you in just a second, but I think that's another great opportunity to say that uh, as soon as we're going to be done here with this wonderful stream for today, because of course we have more time with Laurel tomorrow, so don't worry, but uh, you can just stay and tune in here at the wonderful Adobe Live. There is always so much creativity going on and the lovely Julia Masaska, which is now in the chat, hi Julie, is going to be uh, streaming with the Illustrator Creative Challenge. So make mm -hmm. sure to stay here with us until the end and there is going to be a little break so you can uh, grab a coffee or get some water and then you can tune in for some wonderful Illustrator tricks with Julia for the Creative Challenges. That sounds awesome. Illustrator is so hard. No, it's not. I love it. <laughs> I'm I like, I, I should I should watch it because I need to learn how to do the Illustrator. It's like exactly what you were saying before for photography. I just felt like the same with all the apps with Photoshop. I just it's just a matter of like playing around and the best thing to learn is just make a lot of mistakes and yeah. just keep going through your mistakes and you'll be surprised like i found a very first piece that i've done in illustrators ages ago and it was a frog <laughs> with like so many different textures it was like ridiculous oh my gosh um and it, you know but that's that's a starting point so i think it's just just a matter of uh feel com comfortable in making mistakes <laughs> with, yeah. with every tool <laughs> I, I know the pen tool is super uh, um, intimidating for me, at least. Okay, those are looking pretty good, right? I mean, it's not bad. I think it looks awesome. I'm kind like, of blending. Really, yeah. Like um, the scales even up into my leg, so it looks like there's that. <laughs> and then uh, you can kind of tell I did that messy pen tool here originally. Um, so I might go back and, oh yeah, that looks pretty bad, so. By the way, when you were like merging the thing to your leg, I was like so into, I just caught myself like with my mouth open, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not dribbling because oh that also gosh. happens. <laughs> when i stare like it's super cool photoshop magic oh happening oh my gosh you're too nice i'm glad i can provide some <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool some intrigue i was like you have fins i have fins <laughs> i i've always wanted to be a mermaid so this is another way this lets me do that so cool um, In about like ten minutes, if you if you want to, I think it'll be super cool if we do like a little um, walk through the different images, and you know maybe if you if you could just give us like a little walk through what we've done today for yeah. everybody that joined at the end. So we still have like um, I would say ten minutes to keep working, and then I was just gonna give you a little uh, timer when we're about to to finish. So maybe we can just. Uh, show everybody how did we get here yeah how, how, how did you get fins <laughs> how did this happen please elaborate on how you turn how yourself fins? into i want fins now as well 
Well, Literally. you do the... Um, I'm going to send you 400 shirt. photos of me and be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it. <laughs> Bring them my way. My own yeah. Christmas present. <laughs> to commissioning. Yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that at least someone would like that kind of a gift. That's it's, so cool. Yeah. I'm from the south of Italy, so I kind of like um, grew up with water in water mm. so i am absolutely that's my element for sure so i'm like i, oh, I want the fins i want them <laughs> i'm so jealous i i definitely want to go to italy soon slash someday um obviously it's a little limited still right now with traveling but oh, hopefully soon hopefully i know get there i am very much like a travel bug and full of wanderlust so <laughs> yeah the last year i was inside so much that's another thing is the pandemic as horrible as it was um actually gave me a lot of time <laughs> to do a lot of this art uh which is i think part of the reason why i managed to stay somewhat sane inside for months and months um i was able to you know, take pictures inside and turn myself into all these crazy things and kind of live vicariously through my artwork, um, which was nice and kind of a escape from the real world. So no pandemic in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> they're uh, they're having a good time under under the sea. Yep. Life is, what does he say? What have we been doing here, like on Earth? We need to just get, jump in the water. Life is the bubbles. We got no troubles. <laughs> under the sea. Let me find my, my little guys again. Where did I put my, oh, here there. <laughs> All right, do we have a consensus? I think the yellow was so far like okay. the, the most voted. I like the one that's got like the little purple thing. This one? On the, yeah, I like that the, one too. Cool. The curl and the curly tail. So today my best friend was um seahorse. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Who knows what tomorrow will be? So I think I'm gonna flip I'm thinking he should be like here. It's kind of but then let's flip him because he needs to be watching my back. Oh. <laughs> He's watching my back. It's so like, I'm like, here. Maybe I just got like you. Hanging out like right there. And then we need to make him. Oh, so cute. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> let's make him a little more blendy. And I always forget which one is which, so I'm always like, oh, wait, which one is green? So, blue like this. And then we could also do... So it's a lot of building up layers. Um, it's kind of like um, watercolors. Like, you don't want to just, like, throw down a bunch of color all at once. Mm -hmm. That's what I've noticed. So like you just gotta start building things. Let's do a little bit of exposure because he's quite bright. Like that. And, and then... I really love like how honest you are with your with your workflow because I think that everybody gets scared and thinks that you know people like you when you see your Instagram is like oh she just <laughs> does it perfectly like in one take. It's oh just gosh, <laughs> perfect. Far from true but it's beautiful to see these behind the scenes you know like you trying all the different filters or blending mm -hmm. modes and i mean yeah there's so many different ways you can do it there's it's not really there's not a right way there's not a wrong way um which is again the beauty of it but also right. like intimidating because you're like well where do i even start um so now I'm just, I made him really dark so he blends on this shadowy side. And then let's bring back in some of those highlights from the, the surface. 
<laughs> so cute. Hey, I'm just hanging out here. I'm just helping. Does he have a name? I don't know why Francis just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Francis. This is like a meme. It's like my boyfriend watching sports and then like me like in the background. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just here for support. Yep, I'm just I'm just here. I just exist here. in behind <laughs> behind the scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Sometimes I'll look at an edit that I'm doing. I'm like, this looks like actual crap. But for now, oh, we're loving it. <laughs> we're loving it. For now, it's okay. And Junaid is asking what challenge today. So just after us, um, in about 10 minutes, Julia Masaska is going to uh, launch the daily creative challenge. If you want to learn more and just head on behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Uh, but of course, just wait here with us so uh, we can walk you through the end of this stream and then you're going to have a little break and then Julia is going to talk you through this new stream. So you have time to finish to watch this, to still hanging out here underwater before you submerge again and go back to normal life uh, on the creative challenges. For now, we're here underwater. For now, we're here. <laughs> we're having a good time underwater. Loving it. It almost looks like a painting. Like, I love the way that you've um, created the see-through effect with the light. I don't even know if see-through is, is the right word, but like the yeah. uh, blurred water effect. Thank you. Trial and error, basically. <laughs> up a little bit. I know I get kind of finicky sometimes with certain things, but all worth it when in the end. Usually. <laughs> okay, I guess I can start on the that is pretty cute. That was a good idea. It's a little bit more whimsical mm -hmm. <laughs> than regular Harry Potter. Um, so I think what I'll need to do is with this castle, oopsie, is I'll need to uh, make it a little blurry so it looks like it's actually in the distance. But for now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. And we're going to clean up some of this edging. So we have about five minutes. Um, I don't know, like once you are, uh, maybe after after you do what you were saying, after you do the, the blurriness, if you just want to show us, please, oh, yeah. a little Definitely. bit of a... Um, okay, I can do before that. Before and after. Okay, so let me save quick. We'll start from our sketch. So this was what we started with. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is what I sketched out at the beginning, just to kind of have a reference of what I wanted to do. And then we have these fish that I blended in. The seahorse. He's right there. Um, the fins. So the fins I created from goldfish. Let's see if I can... <laughs> a little goldfish. It's a real goldfish. It's a real goldfish. So yeah, I used two different goldfish and just kind of chopped his fins off. <laughs> and then added some color correcting, some lighting, a lot of layers to really build that color and make it look how I want. And then with me, I started with a bunch of like, there's my hair. That was just me laying on the ground trying to get the hair. Um, a lot of these kind of posed pictures that I, I took myself and stitched them all together so it looks like I'm floating with the two legs. And then I put on 
changing up the lighting. So before this is a little too light, so I made that a little darker. Add some color. We added some seaweed, which I still need to fix that guy. <laughs> Kelp one and two. And then the cliffs. I think I still need to do a little finagling with these. This one's gonna have to be a little blurrier, I think, to make it look like it's farther away. And if anyone else has suggestions for the background for tomorrow, let me know. Yes. So. I'm gonna have to add a couple more little details, I think, to make that underwater castle area. So we're gonna be back here tomorrow with Laurel. Make sure to tune in at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, as Laurel was saying, we're going to be looking forward to your suggestions. And of course, right now, there is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge uh, with Julia Masaska. Just after us, you're going to be able to grab a coffee and then join the stream. And I want to give you a little reminder because uh, Adobe Live will not be streaming next week because of the yearly um, summer, summer shutdown. But there are still going to be a lot of streams going on. So just make sure to come in, come back here and join the fun um, at behance.net slash live. And thank you so much, Laurel, for all this fun. I very much enjoyed myself here. Thank you so much. And I'm sure everybody <laughs> else is done watching you working. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. It was so fun and can't wait for tomorrow and show you the final piece and give you a few more tips and tricks. Yes. So stay tuned and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.